Let's receive it with a hearty amen. Praises to God, to the honorees, and to each of you. I stand before you this evening to introduce a young lady who is a member of the Bud of Youth Choir, and she also attends the Send me on high school. I bring to you our MC for the evening, Sister Deja Johnson. to the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. I pastor Dr. Jolie Taylor, 29th Pastor Year Anniversary Celebration, where the Feast of the Lord is going on. We hope you enjoy the service that's been planned for you. Thanks for coming and come again. Welcome.
Praises and obedience to God, honor to Pastor Taylor, and welcome to all family, friends, and visitors. When I was asked to do a tribute to Pastor Taylor, these are my exact words, and I do quote, Ooh. <laughs> this would be a challenge. And it was. I spent most of my time wondering what to say in this tribute. And time slowly slipped by to the point where I was literally embarrassed that I wouldn't have anything prepared. Then I thought for a while and said, um, what would Pastor do? From all my memories of Mr. Pastor, as I used to call him, <laughs> he always stayed calm. So I took a deep breath, said a quick prayer, and started writing. So in the words of our pastor, I have a few things I want to lift up to you, saints. <laughs> our pastor is, a, is an amazing preacher. All of, his, all of his sermons are inspiring, encouraging, and biblically correct. Leading to my next statement. Our pastor is an equally amazing teacher. Whenever I leave church, I walk away with a better understanding of God's word and how to apply it in my life. And I constantly relay these words to my friends at school. Our pastor is a singer. He is getting better with the help of our wonderful first lady, Sister Taylor. Amen. Our pastor is a family man. He's the proud father of a beautiful college softball playing daughter and a well-educated musical son who has some pretty big shoes to fill and is doing a fine job at that. He has a wife who is an encouraging and caring mother to her children and us kids around the church as well. Finally, we have the world's best pastor who deserves to be honored for his many, many years of service to us, his church, and God. So, now can we please stand and give our pastor a big round of applause for all of the things he's done. Thank you, God bless you, and God be with you. Now we'll have an AMV selection by the original Philadelphia Choir. Ridge and Philadelphia and Mount Ridge are coming together. Come on, give them a great amen. Now, what you put your hand together for the youth who have done a marvelous job. Amen, amen. I am so thankful that. Uh, Mount Ridge and an original Philadelphia are related. Amen. Uh, they have a pastor by the name of Dr. Demetrius Clyde. And uh, Mount Ridge has a co pastor by the name of Dr. Demetrius Clyde. <laughs> And I just decided that I was going to go over and be the doorkeeper at Original Philadelphia. <laughs> and so uh, 
let me put all this together real quick and make it very simple and easy for all of us. Tonight we are so excited to be here on this pastor's and first lady's 29th anniversary. And I've, I am dealing with a situation that is beyond my control and I'm dealing with it. And this week has been a trying week ever since Sunday morning for me. And I said to uh, my son, Dr. Demetrius Kleiss, uh, come prepare to preach on Friday night. And I'm so thankful that he don't go against his father's (laughs) instructions. I give instructions and he obeys them. I'm going to ask this choir if you would give us two selections and the next speaking voice you will hear will be that of the pastor of the original Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church in the person of Dr. Demetrius Kleiss and he will share with us the word of God. Is that all right? Join in with the choir and let's have a good time in the Lord. Everywhere God said it, I 
believe it. God said, I believe it. I believe it. And you know I'm a witness. My Lord, he's shorter than all of your better. And you know I'm a witness. My God, he's walking me through some problems. He said it. I believe it. He said it. I believe it. You know he's walking with you. You know he's walking with me. You know he's walking with you. You know you're walking with you. He said it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You know he's walking. You know he's walking. You know he's shouting. You know he's walking. Can you see him walking? Can you feel him moving? Can you feel him moving? He said it. He said it. He said it. He said it. You better believe it. You better believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You know he's walking with it. You know he's walking with it. You know he's talking with it. You know he's walking with it. You know he's walking with it. He's walking with it. He said it. Take it. You better take it. 
God said it. I believe it. And really that settles it. And the Lord does reign. Not temporarily. But he reigns forever and evermore. Tonight we are blessed of the Lord to be in his house once again. In his presence with the people of God. And we've come tonight for a celebration. We've come tonight for a celebration. We're not here for a cremation, but for a celebration. And if I could find about four real people, I'd make five, who remembers when you were clubbing. Come on, somebody. You were not this dry at the club for your celebration. We've come tonight to celebrate 29 faithful years of pastoring the people of God, sacrificing, serving, giving, leading. Come on, on your feet one more time. Come on, let's celebrate this man of God. Come on, he deserves this and so much more. Come on, Dr. Joe D. Taylor. Hallelujah, a rare gem of a pastor preacher. Amen. We are blessed, the Lord, to know him uh, and to even be associated with a man of his caliber. Uh, Any preacher I know who knows Dr. Taylor will attest to this, that we are blessed. Uh, We are favored to not only know this man, but to be acquainted with him uh, and to count and consider him as a brother and a friend uh, to me really means God has smiled uh, upon us. Amen. Why don't you help me continue celebrating his lovely wife. Come on, Sister Cynthia Taylor. Come on, a wonderful wife, first lady. Come on, leader. I say it often and all the time. You can't love one and not love the other. What a wonderful uh, uh, model uh, of a Christian couple, uh, Dr. Joel and Cynthia Taylor. Uh, God, who is all wise, uh, he is very intelligent. Uh, He knew that Joel Taylor needed somebody like Cynthia Taylor to keep him in line (laughs) amen Uh, but listen both of them are uh, so down to earth Uh, y'all know how it is folk get positions and get to certain levels and you can't even speak to them anymore Uh, but they are so down to earth meek and humble people God has blessed them certainly I am thankful tonight thank you Pastor Simpson uh, for the introduction the words You know, Mount Ridge knows certainly how much you mean to me, uh, and uh, I feel uh, like it was my brother uh, who called, was called home, and certainly we are praying for him, amen, Pastor Simpson, uh, as he has to stand tomorrow. Uh, I can even fathom uh, that kind of a burden, but the God I serve will hold him up. Uh, he'll hold them, give them strength, and sustain him, uh, celebrate him. And First Lady, my sister Deborah Simpson, give God praise for them tonight. Come on, clap your hands for them as well. A wonderful couple as well, uh, who we all can look up to. Thank God for both of them. And certainly I'm glad to have tonight with me uh, my wife, Sister Keisha, somewhere. Where she? Oh, she came down at the choir. Amen. Uh, and... Uh, The greatest members of the greatest church anywhere in the world. Love Corner, y'all. Yeah, hallelujah. Bless God for them. Uh huh. But that's the, y'all got the other kind of love over here. We got the agape love on Cop of the Street. (laughs) Hallelujah to all of you tonight. Uh, We are blessed of God to be here to help celebrate. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Woo! 
I know. That's the, that's the problem. Y'all, Cynthia, see, there you go. There, there he is. Amen. All of you, we bless the Lord for this fellowship tonight. Uh, again, 29 years is an awful long time. Almost 30 years of uh, pastoring uh, African-American godly people uh, in uh, Inglewood. Oh, my. Also to executive pastor uh, Jasper Taylor, give God praise for him as well, doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Has a very, very bright future ahead of him uh, because he's rooted in the word uh, and for to be a young man, uh, he's far beyond his years in maturity. Uh, so I thank God for what's to come. Uh, for him and certainly to Reverend T. Tyrone Robinson, assistant pastor at OP. Uh, come on, stand with us. Uh, as I was preparing, I did not know what your theme or theme scripture was, uh, but by God's providence, uh, that's where I'm going tonight, uh, to uh, the Aoptic Gospel, uh, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. Lord, my prayer is tonight that I will see you more clearly, love you more dearly, walk close to you more nearly. Thank you, God, for another preaching privilege. I pray, God, now for power to preach and proclaim this your living word. God, I pray that you use me now as your vehicle and vessel to speak unto your people, oracles of truth that ring out from the corridors of heaven. Father, forgive me, fit me, and fix me. Master, melt me, mold me, make me from frail, feeble, finite, with faults, flaws, and failures. Please sustain me, support, and strengthen me. God, to the end, that sinners are saved, that the saints are strengthened, and that your Son, who is our Savior, is satisfied. I ask it now as I ask every prayer. In the only name that matters is the strong name of your son. He is Jesus the Christ, we pray. With thanksgiving and for his sake, let the church shout amen. amen. John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17 from the English Standard Version. The Bible reads thusly, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen. The characteristics of a faithful shepherd. Characteristics of a faithful shepherd. I believe tonight that we worship at a most critical time in the life of the church. When we listen to religious programs on the radio, watch religious telecasts on the television. It is uh, astounding, almost spiritually criminal to what we hear and see 
being preached, propagated, and taught that they say is the Word of God and even how we conduct ourselves as leaders in the Lord's church. Paul admonished the shepherds in Ephesus at Ephesus in Acts chapter 20. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. The shepherd, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Paul also stated, that of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. It does not take rocket science to distinguish, as John Tien lifts, the hireling from the good shepherd. Hireling is only in it for what he can get for the money. There's no care. There's no concern. There's no compassion. There's no love shown toward the sheep. But Jesus says, I am uh, the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. The sheep know me, and I know them. This text tonight in John 21 suggests shepherds have uh, really two things to focus on, number one. First thing is, he lives to suggest to us the primary duty of the shepherd. Contrary to what you may have heard, read, or even created in your criteria when you search for a pastor. The pastor, the shepherd, has really two primary things to do. That's to feed and to lead. I heard about 80 of y'all right there. To feed and to lead. That alone requires a whole lot of time, energy, effort, sacrifice. His primary duty is to feed and to lead. Their perpetual duty is to love the flock. Suggest to us really that if you are to be a pastor, you really need to be a loving person. You, 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 you really can't be hateful and mean as a junkyard dog and desire the office of a pastor. You have to deal with people all of the time. And if you don't love them and care for them, you, there's really, it'd be a clash, chaos, and conflict all of the time. So verse 15, first of all, lifts up to us. First characteristic, that is to supply the saints. This question is raised, do you love me? Now, of course, you can't take biblical words on the surface. You have to do some word study. Uh, There are four different types of love, agape, godly Leo, brotherly, eros between man and woman, and storge, family love. Jesus is asking, do you agape type of love mean? The highest kind of love. A love that is lofty, spiritual, and pure. This love is self-denying, self-sacrificing, Unconditional, unchanging, and unending. 
the pastor has to love people and talking about self sacrificing, self denying, he has to love people that don't love him. He has to feed people that don't want to eat. He has to lead people that do not want to follow. He has to be a loving person. If he's not, he'll walk away the first hint of trouble. So Peter responds by saying, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. But Peter's response is phileo. He's talking brotherly kind of love. Deep affection for a brother. Jesus says, feed my lambs. Feed, Bosco in the Greek, to provide food for the flock to follow. The pastor has to provide the right kind of a spiritual diet for the sheep. I remember uh, in an interview with uh, the Prince of Preachers, Dr. Gardner C. Taylor, and he was being interviewed by a young pastor and... Uh, Taylor was commenting on uh, what he called this modern day gospel. He called it candy gospel. He says too many young preachers are feeding people nothing but candy, nothing but sweets. And he said you can't grow eating sweets all your life. He also said if you eat too many sweets, your teeth will fall out. So imagine the task that the shepherd has to feed the flock. Just like we as children did not like everything that our parents prepared for us. But it was good for us. Try again. We didn't like everything they fixed. But what they prepared for us was beneficial for us. It was to help us grow. You won't like every sermon the pastor preaches. But it's good for you. It will help you grow spiritually. And too many sheep are suffering from spiritual malnutrition. Not because the pastor's not preparing a meal. They're not coming to the table to dine and eat. Feed my lambs. Lambs are little ones. They are are young or new converts. See, the new convert is very vulnerable. They're fresh from the world into the church. And they, 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 they need more attention than we season sheep. Oh, show got quiet right now. Like a baby has to have milk. They can't eat solid food. They have to have milk. They have to be tended to more often than we do. So young converts need more attention. He has to feed them. If he gives them junk, they won't grow. They must start out with milk. And then they move up from milk to baby food. Y'all know how, how y'all gave your babies greens and cornbread. Master, yeah. But they cannot have solid food as an infant. They have to grow to that level. The shepherd has to, pro- to provide a s- spiritual nourishing delicacies. Sheep, lambs need to be fed. They're young. They're, they're weak. He has to feed them and not fleece them. When you look at the identity of sheep, you'll understand why it's so important to feed them and to lead them. Because number one, sheep uh, by nature are dumb animals. They're wayward. Easily frightened and confused. They've been known to walk to the edge of cliffs and just jump off. 
they're also dependent on the shepherd. They're also defenseless. Jesus said, I am the door. Sheep are also directionless. They need guidance. I know some of y'all think that you don't need the preacher. I think the Bible says around Romans chapter 10 that how can they hear without the preacher? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by. They're also dull with it. They are inattentive and unreceptive. Y'all know how it is. Y'all getting quiet. When he's preaching, when I'm preaching now, some of y'all ain't paying attention. You're praying that I won't be too long. They're also doughty. They are stubborn by nature. I've seen all kinds of animals at, at, at the shrine old school circuits. Wrangling brothers, universe soul. I've seen llamas and tigers and lions and elephants all tamed at, cir- at the circus. I've never seen sheep tamed before because they're stubborn. However, sheep still, they're still able to recognize the shepherd. And they know his voice. Because he calls the sheep by their name. Like a mother knows her baby's voice. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. They recognize him and he recognizes them. Western shepherds must drive their sheep from the side or from behind with the aid of sheepdogs. But eastern shepherds simply lead their sheep by voice. He goes before them. And the sheep follow him. Because they know his voice. Uh, there's a powerful principle right here. The Bible does not suggest, say, nor substantiate sheep leading the shepherd. It's the shepherd's job to lead the sheep. I, I think the psalmist said, he leadeth me beside still waters. Sheep aren't smart enough To lead the shepherd. The shepherd must lead the sheep. They follow the shepherd and yet they are smart enough to flee from the stranger. So he must first of all supply the saints. Verse 16, second second of all suggests that he is to support the saints. Second question comes again. Jesus, do you love me? Agape, he received the same response. But now Jesus says literally, tend my sheep. Keep shop. Shepherd or supervise my sheep. Now I've given you the identity of the sheep. But look at the identity of the shepherd. He relocates the sheep. When there's danger. He rescues the sheep. When the wolf is around. He restores the sheep that strays away. He has a responsibility. For guarding and guiding the sheep. The true shepherd has access to the fold. And acceptance from the flock. That false shepherd, that hireling lacks commitment, care, concern, and compassion. They're only out for one thing, well, a few things. They're out for popularity. Prestige, power, pay, position. They they like their name called. 
they like bright lights. They, 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 they like their name emboldened all the time. A, a, a true shepherd is often unpopular. Those who don't compromise are unpopular. Those who don't give in to the status quo, they, they, they're not popular. They're, they're not called by the mayor. They don't sit in meetings on the fifth floor downtown. But I would rather stand on the word of God and be ostracized by man than to be in favor with man and God be angry at me. A loving shepherd, true shepherd, has to give food, give feed. Good, sound, solid, spiritual teaching. Young man gave a tribute, said it, said it best. He's an amazing preacher, amazing teacher. And uh, shame on you if you don't come and hear this man preach and teach. He must give food. He must also guide fully. Good, sound, spiritual training. Training. When uh, he gives food, and guides fully, the sheep can then graze fittingly. They'll grow firmly. They'll glow fiercely. And then they'll go forward and do the work and the will of God. Last thing to take a gesture, I'm in my seat. Verse 17, he must shepherd the saints. Now, Jesus, this third time, condescends to Peter's level and says, do you have personal affection for me? Since you didn't get it twice before, Peter, let me bring it to your level. Now, this actually broke Peter completely. Many scholars agree and suggest that this threefold inquiry matched his threefold denial. Now, the shepherd, in his shepherding and uh, counseling, teaching, preaching, has to have the ability to put it where the sheep can get it. One thing I've said for years, and, 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 and uh, pastors who, who I know who, who know of Dr. Taylor, uh, they, they've always said this, and I'll say it tonight, I don't know if you know it or not, about Dr. Taylor. Uh, a man with his education, uh, he could easily be arrogant, standoffish, he could e easily preach to you in a, a way uh, that's so high academically that you would never get it. But, but he's smart enough, wise enough to give it to you where, well, Morgan at, who told me she's going to watch me tonight. <laughs> where she can get it. And where the person with the degree, maybe equal to his, can also understand it. Now, sheep, and I'm done. Sheep need, from the shepherd, two things. They need a good pastor. Who not only preaches and teaches well, because there are many who can preach, who can teach with the best of them. But they are not good pastors. They're not good people. And that goes a long way. Yes, you need to be fed the word of God. 
and taught the word of God. But you need someone who has a good reputation. I'm trying to help somebody. And a man that has character and integrity. You need a good pastor and they need gracious pastoring. Someone who's not up every week acting like they're mad that they're a pastor. Even though y'all And walk on certain nerve. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He understands uh-huh. that that comes with the territory. Yeah. I, I never forget we were in Shreveport, Louisiana. I told the church this, and Pastor Quinn Hammond was up preaching that night. He spoke of a friend of his who was pastoring, and there was a member of his church, a lady who was contemplating suicide. She wrote, she, wrote, she wrote out a suicide note and said, God, I'm giving you one more chance. She went to church that Sunday and Hammond said his friend, the pastor, that Sunday, instead of preaching Jesus, preached an anti-deacon sermon. And after after service, she left church, and that week she committed suicide because his focus was in the wrong place. Yes, there are some struggles. Yes, there are some burdens. Yes, there's you know all kinds of stuff that come with with the role in the job, but. The sermon. The sermon needs to be the sermon. Because folk are coming to worship with all kinds of hurts and issues and problems. And, and we can't afford to lose folk to suicide because we're, we're busy fussing at the deacons in the sermon. And Hammond said, preachers, if you do nothing else, okay, how mad you are, preach Jesus. And I believe for 29 years, matter of fact, I know for 29 years, Dr. Joe DeMond Taylor has stood flat foot in this pulpit and preached Jesus. Who came through 42 generations. Walk the dusty roads of Palestine. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Doing his father's bidding. Died on Friday. Went in the grave, stayed there all night Friday. All day Saturday and early Sunday morning. He got up with all power. With all power in his hand for 29 years. He stood at St. Paul and preached the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ. St. Paul, you got a reason to shout tonight. You have a great pastor, a great leader, a great preacher, a great teacher, a wonderful father, a man with integrity, character, a great reputation for 29 years. God bless you, Joe Taylor. Keep on preaching. Keep on teaching. Stay on the wall. Don't come down. You're doing a great work. When they, when, they, when they don't listen, keep preaching. If they tip and say the tithe, keep on preaching. If they get on your nerves, stand in the pulpit and preach Jesus until heaven gets the news.
What a powerful and prolific word from the parchment on tonight. Brian McKnight wrote a song in the form of a question. It says, do I ever cross your mind anytime? Do I ever cross your mind anytime? And there may be a sinner among us God is asking that question tonight. Do I ever cross your mind anytime? And tonight, um, since God is asking you that question, you can give him an answer. That whenever God cross your mind, if you don't know him in your heart, why don't you say yes? What good is it to have him in your head and he's not in your heart? So give him your heart tonight. He keeps asking that question over and over again. Do I ever cross your mind anytime? You don't want to leave here tonight after hearing such a powerful and prolific word from God without giving your life to Jesus Christ. Life abundantly. Oh, come. Come on. Tonight is a good night to give the devil his walking papers. Give him his keys and evict him out your life and move Christ into your life. Is there one tonight? With a show of hands, all those that are saved and in a Bible-believing church, can you show your hands tonight? Amen. We have discharged that duty. We see none has came. To Christ returns, there's still room. Hallelujah. All praise be to our God. What a mighty word from the man of God. We didn't get that. Uh, Lord have mercy. He walked all over us, didn't he? My God, my God. But yeah, I know. Pastor gets on my nerves. I understand. But you know that's a two way street, don't you? <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you, Dr. Clyde, for challenging us with the Word of God. Stay right there in the Bible. Now is, mm -hmm, we're going to share with the 